Welcome to this presentation of ways to win this holiday season. This is 2020 and we're talking about online commerce best practices, especially for confectioners, although anyone who's watching will be able to get something from this live webinar. You know, it's been a crazy year. We all have had ups and downs in our sales, a lot of scares, a lot of fear. And I just wanna reassure everyone that no matter where you are in your business, everyone else is in a similar boat. And that does not mean that there are not opportunities to win this holiday. I actually believe that we're going to have an even greater opportunity to be able to sell products in this latter part of 2020 because people have not been buying for a long time. They've been having a hard year. So they're definitely going to want to indulge in some, um, just giving gifts to help celebrate the fact that they made it through this difficult year. So I want to focus on what can you do? What can we do as business owners through online commerce to help increase our sales? And I want to share that this presentation is done in partnership with Retail Confectioners International, which is a wonderful nonprofit that helps to provide community and education for people in the candy and confection industry. And it, if you go check out their website or join their e-newsletter or participate in any of these live webinars, you will see an overwhelming response of people offering information and helping to get you connected to anything that you need to know if you're in the candy industry. So please go check them out and let's roll right on in. So I'm Emily Page. I've got over 12 years of experience in product development. That's like specifically it's physical products that I've been working in and I've helped to launch products into bestsellers online. I've received awards for the designs that we've done. Um, I've also had products in Gleam Sonoma and worked with really massive brands that are known all over the world like Bon Bon Bon. So I have a lot of experience. That was just the main point to explain to you. I also do growth consulting. So if anyone ever wants to talk about how to grow their business, you can always reach out to me at emilyannpage.com as well as pearlresourcing.net, which is my packaging design company. So that just gives you information about my expertise so that you can trust that what I'm sharing with you is based on experience. The agenda of this webinar today is to answer this question, what will be different in holiday for 2020 and how can you win in sales? What are some strategies? So what we will do today is go through five points that we will learn from data. So we'll take five main points that can be found in data researched from this past year we will then apply it to your business in five different ways. And then we're gonna close by talking about high level strategy. So what is the mindset that you're going to need to have to be able to win in this very challenging year? And you can do it. So let's go and roll right on in. In case you're interested in where the research has come from, you can pause this video and be able to go and find the articles. And just, I wanted you just to at least know that it's based on things I didn't make up and that they're reputable sources. So point number one, online sales increased. And this is the most obvious point of this entire presentation, but I wanted to tell you how much. 55% over past year's sales is what we currently are achieving in 2020. And what that means is that consumers still wanna buy products that they were once purchasing in brick and mortar stores, they've moved those purchasing decisions to online. And one company called Adobe Analytics actually attributes over $107 billion spent online globally, because of course we can imagine not only needing to buy new products like face masks, people can't go into stores. They couldn't go into restaurants. They couldn't go get their hair cut. So they had to buy those products and do those things in home. So um, the other thing that's interesting about that is that customers say they love shopping online and either because they're a little bit concerned still about COVID or because they found, wow, this is actually really simple and makes my life easy. A lot of people have said they're going to continue to do their shopping online. And so it's very likely that a portion of brick and mortar retail sales will never rebound again. People will probably still continue to buy at some portion online. So what does that mean for you and how can you apply it to your business? Obviously, this means you need to be investing in your website and your online shopping commerce platform. If you did not have a really great website before, 
now is the time to invest money into that because it's going to benefit you in the long run. And if you do have a website and you're not hundred percent confident that it's the best, for example, perhaps you don't get a lot of sales conversions. Perhaps you lost sales this past 2020 when people could not come in into stores. Maybe your website did not result in sales. That means it's time to invest in those things. And I, I can see a temptation amongst us as small business owners to be on a budget. And it's true that spending a lot of money does not necessarily get you better value, but it's also true that spending no money will definitely get you no value. So there needs to be some kind of healthy medium. And so my first piece of recommendation is of course, to be able to go online and really focus on your optimizing your website. And how can you do that? Okay, so let's break that down. There is first a strategic technical element of that, and that is your shopping cart and your shopping experience. And it's funny, we can spend so much time focusing on growing our business, making amazing chocolate, you know, putting them into beautiful packaging. We can literally forget what it's like as a customer to go through our own shopping process. So what I recommend is you have solicit some friends to get involved and to go through the buying process and to give you feedback on what it was like. Was it easy? Did it make it hard for them to check out? What caused them to question that purchase if they were a normal consumer? I also highly recommend that you go through and, um, oh, I should share with, with you this data. For the average e-commerce provider, three quarters of shoppers choose to leave a site without completing a purchase. And so that means there's variability depending upon how great your website is at actually taking a person who's browsing to shop and actually converting them into a, a buyer. And when people don't buy, there are lots of different reasons. But you, it's important for you to look at your own ability for your website to convert a person who's browsing to someone who actually purchases. And, and then also calculate the number of people who put stuff in the cart, but don't actually convert to buy. Those are three metrics that you should be able to, to speak to at any time when thinking about your online commerce business as a business, because it measures the success and conversion, the convertibility of your website. And it shows you where you can have area to improve. And um, if people, for example, are not coming to your website, if you've got low numbers there, then you know you've got a traffic problem. You've got to fix that. You've got to find out how to get more people to your website. If you have people who are shopping and they're putting products in your shopping cart and then they don't actually click to buy, then you know you have a shopping cart problem. It's very likely that some part of your process is not, is making people say this is too much work. I don't want to, I don't want to buy this thing. So you want to look at that number and see how does it compare as a ratio compared to what we have here on the slide, which is a national average. And then the other thing that you can, you know, double check is that, um, well, just your number of sales. You want to, you want to figure out your ratio of monthly sales, given the number of people who visit your website, how many sales do I convert? And just assume that if you had a hundred people and you sold to three, then that means if you had a hundred thousand people, you know, you just multiply that by however many, how many sales you people you have coming to your website, that is how much you can have as a percentage and can expect. So that is really exciting because then you can start to measure your online commerce sales. Another interesting fact is that, you know, if you, you can install an, an app or a feature in your website to email people when they put stuff in their shopping cart and then they forget about it. And so that's something that for some reason has a really high likelihood that it'll get consumers back to your store and they'll click on that email with a 43% probability. So look at your technical elements of your website to see what you can do to optimize your online sales. And really, we want to think about this as solving their problems and making them the hero in the entire process. Visually, here are some other tips that, that I want to share with you. You want to maximize pictures of your product because that is really what's going to tempt them to want to click to buy. So what we have found very consistently is that 3D mockups or very professional photos 
result in the best click through. So don't take pictures with your iPhone, you know, actually invest in some professional cleaned up photography to be able to create the most conversions. And some special things you got to like, just know some people for some reason don't know this part, but you know, if you have a square, an allowable square uh, with like, let's say you know, a thousand by 1000 pixels, you want to make sure that your product fills as much of that space without touching the edges of that square. You want to remove all shadows, make, make sure that the background is clean and white. For some reason that statistically performs better than having a lifestyle photo. And then you want to have lifestyle photos after that first initial picture, or maybe even um, iconographic things that explain how to use your product or, or how to pair it with a wine, for example. So you want your first photo to be just a really delicious picture of what that product is that's going to optimize the allowable space on your shopping platform. You also want to make sure that any packaging is very legible that the products are clear, that the pictures aren't pixelated, and you want to be sure that the lighting is really strong there so that you can actually see those, those products, the colors are gonna pop. And then lastly, you want to design with search results in mind. If you are selling your product on a platform like Amazon, walmart.com, or just any other company that's going to have other products there. You need to literally go to that website to see what will this look like when it's on that website? How will we compete? How will it compare? And that's true if you are creating, for example, chocolate truffles, and you probably have created a new holiday season flavor, and then you add it into your collection of other products. If you go to your website and you click on all truffles, which you probably don't do when you first upload that listing. What does it look like when I look at all of the truffles together in one page? Very often what, what escapes our attention as brand owners is that either A, all the products look the same, no matter how many different flavors you have, or number two, the products don't stand out in comparison to the other things. So the other stuff is more interesting. And literally the way that picture looks is what determines whether or not that product sells because people aren't there in stores able to taste your chocolate or, or really see it up close. So it's, it's very deceiving to say, oh, this is our best seller, but it could be, it's possible that the photo that you have is actually the most appealing thing on your website. So to be strategic and optimized, you wanna go look at your actual visual elements of your website and of your products and make sure that you make refinements as described here. Um, another interesting thing, okay, another interesting, the third piece of data I want you to consider is that this concept of buy online, pick up in store has always been a thing, but it became really significant and obviously important during the coronavirus pandemic. And we saw sales increasing by 59% in August, um, compared to July and 30% of consumers that they prefer using BOPIS or curbside pickup over delivery. And what that means is that a lot of shoppers really want to be able to have products instantly, which is the benefit of buying online is, um, sorry, buying in stores is that you can instantly enjoy that product. But at the same time, they don't necessarily want to go into stores or they were not in this case able to go into stores. And some of those people actually found that that is way more convenient. You can imagine a busy mom with three kids in the car or a dad is taking his kids to soccer. It's just, it's a, sometimes a pain to have to go into that store to go shopping for what you want. So this type of service is one that a lot of small entrepreneurs have not considered but I wanna encourage you to look at the fact that it's been so successful. And the positive thing about a BOPIS is that you're sort of, if you are able to offer online ordering, in-store purchases, as well as BOPIS, you are literally making it so easy for your consumer to buy and enjoy your products. And it's going to keep people coming back into your stores remembering you and you become a huge problem solver for them no matter what their needs are. And so for that reason, the answer, the application I wanna share with you is that don't neglect your stores. Make sure that the displays still continue to look good, that your 
um, offering something that's going to be well choreographed so that the colors and the branding is all beautiful. And really you want to, um, I just misspelled ensure, I just noticed. <laughs> but you really want to make sure that you're offering multiple ways that consumers can engage with you and your store. Advertise these things in your e-newsletter and on your website. Focus on making things convenient for people in the midst of this difficult time of transition. As difficult as it is for us, as business owners, it's equally been difficult on our customers. So this is a really great way to be able to still keep in contact safely at a safe six feet away. Now, the next point I want to bring up is that, and it's, it's really interesting, is that people actually the first place that people shop is on Amazon online. And you're like, what, what are you talking about, Emily? People go to Google. Well, actually, when people go into a search function, Facebook um, and Google are definitely places where people do sometimes go to search, but actual purchases, 60% of anything bought on the internet was on Amazon. And if I could explain to you the size and capacity of, you know, just the sheer magnitude of what that means is that, you know, there's, there's Amazon and then there's, there's target. And then there's all these other big companies that are representing the other percentages. And then there's your store, which can't even begin to compete with the amount of traffic and people and just eyes, eyes that are literally on amazon.com. And so small mom and pop shops, can oftentimes find Amazon intimidating and they, it is, it's definitely not an easy platform to be able to get your products onto. You have to be very diligent to read customer, um, customer help, um, seller central help desk information. And it is literally very challenging, but it's also very rewarding. And what, it, what it means that 60% of people in 2019 bought some, we're making purchases on Amazon is that that's actually where a lot of people start their searching for products. And if a product is on Amazon, it's always going to come up higher in a search field on Google than anywhere else. So that really should tell you something about how many eyes are in this platform. And so I want to ask you, are you currently listing products on Amazon? There can be a ton of different barriers to entry. Maybe you don't want to ship your product there. You know that a lot of chocolate melts in the sea in um, the summer or in hot seasons. I also know that sometimes products can get broken, but and I also know that Amazon takes a large chunk of as a referral fee, so it can reduce your margins. But there, there have been what we have noticed is that a lot of people because they go to Google first, will find a product and oftentimes even go to a website just to verify that that brand looks legitimate, is a, is a brand of quality. So I just, I just think you should consider the fact that, you know, for a while we were all saying, oh, you've got to be social media advertising on Facebook. And it, it took a long time for a lot of us to actually get our businesses on Facebook and to even maintain it there. But Amazon is just like that. And you just don't want to be left behind. And it's a great opportunity if you have the energy and time, if you've already conquered your online commerce platform and your local business. It could be a great way to get new eyes on your product. And I want to tell you, there's also lots of opportunity for you to four times your, your sales um, during these seasonal months. There's a lot of products that can just only come in for the holidays. They don't often have enough giftable things like candy because it's, it's been a difficult category for them to convince people to get in, involved in. So I want you to consider it at least and look into it. You can also drop ship your products yourself. So that means that you can list your products on Amazon and they will allow you to treat it as though it was purchased on your website and just ship it yourself. They'll give you the label and everything. Um, you'll be able to give any consumers who buy on their cheaper freight because Amazon has the best freight because of the amount of volume that they do. So there's a lot of positive benefits um, that you can apply to yourself for this year to increase your sales. The last and most important point is that I want to point out to you, many of you have your iPhone somewhere near you right now. 
and you have texted or called one of your friends or a loved one. And what that means is that people are constantly having their iPhone in their hands and that it's there accessible when they come, when some need of theirs comes to mind. Oh, I forgot to go shopping for Christmas presents. Oh, this Hanukkah gift is coming up. I need to go, this Hanukkah is coming up. I need to go buy a gift. Oh my goodness, it's the end of the year. I need to give my children's teacher a present. So these are the thoughts that people have. And what they do is they look and search on their iPhone. And to give you even more evidence, smartphones accounted for 40% of online sales so far this year. Like 40%. And it's an increasing number every year. More and more online sales are happening on iPhone. And people predict that iPhones will will replace, that they will become so essential that most things will be done on, on some type of a tablet or iPhone or um, smartphone. So you need to ask yourself these questions. You know, how am I optimizing for a iPhone Android environment? And some of the ways that we can, we can help you to, to make sure that your product is optimized is we can just recommend that you want to use images as much as possible to help instruct to people, you know, how your product works to really sell who you are and what you're all about. You want to break, you want to include text because that's important for SEO, but you want to break it up so that you don't just have large bodies of text without images. These people don't have time to read. So you want to shorten the text. You want to use different fonts, different hierarchies of fonts so that you have a clear title and different headings optimize with color. And you also want to go through and do a test, test to see if it's easy to shop on an iPhone. Ask your friends to help you do that. If you're finding that a lot of times like Shopify, for example, will give you information, hey, carts get abandoned, shopping carts get abandoned more with an iPhone or an Android than they do with your desktop. So you can look at your analytics to see what are consumers doing and how are they engaging on your website. And then you go find out, you know, you can troubleshoot what those issues are when you find that they're not working. One uh, or two tools that you can use is that Google, of course, has come up with a handy dandy free system that you can use to put your website into this link. And it will tell you if it is mobile friendly. And it's kind of terrible because you'll see all the different ways that your website is really Maybe there's a broken link. Maybe um, images are double stacked or too close together for, for the customer to be able to click. The oddest thing is that maybe you won't notice. So this little robot uh, thing that's free by Google will help you to do a quick analysis of your mobile friendly website. And screenfly.org is a company that does something very similar, but it allows you to basically take your website and look at it as though it was on different resolution sized sizes of a computer screen. So you can see it on a large desktop, a small desktop, an iPhone, an Android all at once by just clicking a few buttons. And that really helps you to understand whether or not your website is really working well on mobile. And oh my gosh, that was not the last point. I have one more point. Ah, and now we come to the true last point. The last piece of data I need to share with you is that free shipping increases conversions. So a study by Baymerd found that the number one reason why carts, shopping carts are abandoned is that 60% of shoppers noticed that there was an extra cost and they didn't like that extra cost. They weren't anticipating the extra cost. And so when polled, people said that it was that fee that made them decide to not complete their purchase. And what's interesting is that those retailers, online retailers who have offered free shipping, that the majority of them see at least an increase of revenue by 10%. Now I know this data is kind of old and I believe that it's even higher now, but I could not find a good reputable uh, research report. So you'll have to bear with me and do your own research on that. But uh, it's on average, that's at least the minimum increase. And 93% uh, of respondents when asked, hey, if we gave you free shipping, would you buy more? They said yes. So the proof will always have to be in the pudding, but it's very interesting to realize that your consumer views a, 
shipping fee as a, almost like a penalty psychologically. They're like, oh no, I'm all excited about my product and now I'm going to have to pay a fee for completing my purchase. And it's, it's a Debbie downer. It's not a positive thing. So how can you apply this to yourself? Um, the first and foremost thing is that you can research your shipping costs and increase your price by that percent which would allow you to be able to offer free shipping on every single order. So one client found that we worked with found that, you know, costs were about 19% of their total sale amount. And so if they increased their prices by 20%, they completely covered the cost to them of shipping. And so you obviously have to do some research to see if that's the right fit for you, but that's an, a way that you could possibly do that. And often convection is a great place to do that because you know, you usually have a fixed fee. Okay. Every single order has to go into this type of a box. And it's also not that big and bulky to be able to have overages. So anyway, the point is consider that as an option. Another way that you could reduce your fees of freight would be to utilize the 3PL, which is a company that will pick and pack your products when they're ordered for you. They will have a higher volume discount on freight. Uh, and you can also talk to a broker. So for example, I work with DHL for a lot of international shipments of samples, and I don't work directly with DHL. I actually work through Optimal Ship, which is a broker that gets a lot of volume with both DHL and FedEx. And therefore I get to have the benefits of saving, you know, a lot. So look into who you're using for shipping. Another thing that you can do is that you can design your packaging, your gift offerings, specifically to fit inside of the fixed size boxes. So USPS, FedEx, they have certain fixed rate boxes and it's based on dimension and weight. So you can actually oftentimes call your business representative and ask them for advice about that. The USPS business website actually has a way that you can log in and actually um, access they have all the fixed rates, the fixed rate boxes, the dimensions, the size, the weights requirements. And so you could actually design products to be able to fit into that. That way, when you're offering free shipping, you already know that, wait, that your costs for that freight shipment is going to be fixed. And then last, the last way that you can apply this to yourself is to actually incentivize consumers to join with you in bearing the burden of this by rewarding them. So that way at, at checkout, they actually feel great and the ways that you can do that is by offering free shipping on orders over $50, for example. So, or maybe even $100, which could incentivize people to buy more so that they don't have to pay, you know, a fee that they don't feel like paying on shipping. You can also offer free shipping only to your website members. That way people are signing up with their email address. Or you could give them a special code when they sign up for um, your e-newsletter. Either way, what you're doing is encouraging people to connect to you in a way that's going to also benefit your company for long-term sales and profit. So the summary of what we've just learned is that sales online, number one, is going to be very crucial. Most customers prefer it. It's not going away. So this is really important to invest time, money, and strategy into optimizing your online presence and sales strategy. Number two, customers want to be able to pick up online. So if you, you need to be able to offer all three of these things. So if you have a brick and mortar and you have as well, a website, you should be offering the BOPIS, which is kind of a great bridge to be able to help people in the midst of COVID. And then uh, thirdly, we want to say that the majority of sales that are happening online is happening on Amazon. And you can at any point as a small mom and pop shop, jump onto Amazon and begin to sell your products. It would be complicated, but there's definitely webinars, courses, as well as consultants and people out there who can help you to optimize it so that you can actually make some money. And it can cr create some great leads. Fourth, your customers will be shopping on their smartphone. So make sure that your website and your shopping experience is totally optimized for that. And fifth, customers buy more per order and are more loyal when you are offering free shipping. So those are the five points and conclusions that you have today, but the webinar is not completely done yet because the other thing I want to just briefly touch on is your mindset because with all of that great strategy, <laughs> it's been a hard year 
And so I don't want anyone out there to feel discouraged. So this will be a very brief, but high level perspective of, of what we want to keep in mind. Okay. This year, I'm going to talk quickly about how you can think about your holiday seasons that you can optimize sales. So our goals for this holiday are to increase short-term sales and profits and build long-term value for your business, right? The good news is that there's some variables that are in your control because profit is just your total revenue minus your total costs. We all know that. And if we break down total revenue and total costs deeper, we really have your price times your quantity minus your variable cost times your quantity minus your fixed costs. So what this means is in this jumbled little algorithm here is that you can control your pricing that increases your total revenue. That's something in your control. So you can go look and see, should we be raising our prices to be able to cover you know, our rising costs or maybe we co cover our shipping costs? That's in your control. And I wanna encourage you that these are variables that you have power over. You also have power over the quantity that you sell because um, I'm gonna come here and explain, you know, the, the law of large numbers says that there is basically an average. So if you talk to a hundred customers and a certain number of them are going to buy, if you did the exact same pitch every single time. So if you sell to a hundred, you talk to a hundred people and only three buy or maybe 10 buy, you know that you're, ten, that you're if you sell to 10, that's 10% 10 conversion ratio, which is, which is really great. Cause what that means is if you timed a hundred by 10 and the 10 customers by 10, if you sold to um, a thousand people, then you'd be able to get a hundred sales. And the cool thing about that is that it's a science. Sales is a science. It's about the number of times that you make offers to customers. That is what directly impacts the quantity that you're going to sell. So if you have low sales this year or it, low sales in the future, then you have to ask yourself, what can I do to be able to make more offers to people? And it's been hard. I mean, it's been very hard. We haven't been legally allowed to make offers to sell to people, but as things begin to lift and open back up, that's the thing we need to focus on is making more offers to people to be able to purchase. And you don't have to feel worried that if you can get in front of more people, you should be able to sell more product. And it's that part is a science, a mathematical reliability. <clears throat> and beyond the, that, you know, the science of sales, there's also an art. So if you talk to a hundred people and you convert 10 people to buy the art with one particular pitch, the art of sales is that you can actually increase that conversion ratio by working on your offer. And there's different ways that you can do that. You can improve your offer. So like visually, so you can pricing, collections, messaging, or you can improve your technique. So you can try to improve the technology in the shopping carts the experience, which is what we've just discussed. And you can build a long-term relationship with people over time where they trust you. And you can daily get better at both the science and the art of sales just by not giving up, by continually, continually coming back and trying to iterate to improve. And so I want to reassure you that, you know, there are, there are different people on this webinar and some people out there are just happy with where they are and other people want to grow. And I believe that because you're on this, you are ready to grow. And I, I assure you that when you take action, especially that's informed action, like what we've just discussed with data behind it, hard data that will produce results. So don't be discouraged. You have within your power you know, right now, the ability to, to implement all of these ideas, the more offers you're making to your customers, the more times you reach out to them in a way that's supporting them, not your sales, but supporting them, the more that they're going to think about you and going to be able to remember to buy from you. So thank you so much for joining me today. Everyone who is attend an attendee of this webinar is welcome to come to my website at emilyannpage.com for a free a 30 minute consult. We'll talk about your business. We can also do a website online commerce teardown, which is where we look at your website together um, during that 30 minutes on a zoom call and talk about what, you know, how can we apply the principles that we just talked about to your company to be able to optimize your sales this holiday season. And if you want to stay connected, please do add me on LinkedIn, follow me on, um, 
YouTube or any other, or my website, we have an awesome e-newsletter. And I also want to share with you again, the access information for Retail Confectioners International. That organization is so dynamic because people really support each other in that group. So if you're in the confection industry and you want to have a network of people who have real experience making candy, who can help you to find the best, you know, even like down to the best method to be able to stir the candy so that it, it forms correctly or the right machine to buy. Really this, this crew is so helpful. So I recommend go checking them out so you can get access to more live events like this. To everyone, thank you so much. I hope that this helped you to go from start to sold and I look forward to the next time we get to meet together. Have a great one.